This guy, I'm telling you, when, when this guy uh, comes out of here, uh, people are going to storm the stage this... and beat me to death because this is the guy you want right here. He is a uh, veteran of uh, two NASA space shuttle missions and is featured in the IMAX film Hubble 3D. Movie everyone is talking about gravity, but one person who knows it, he's been up there. One of the real life heroes who helped inspire this movie, he's our person of the week. Us to talk about the mission, the legacy, is a genuine spaceman. It happens to be the title of his book. He's done four spacewalks, currently professor at Columbia and head of space for the Intrepid Museum. Ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to astronaut Mike Massimino. Veteran NASA astronaut Mike Massimino. Please welcome Mike Massimino, a former NASA astronaut and senior advisor to space programs at the Intrepid Museum. The guys here call me Mass. Mass. That's a cool nickname, because force equals mass times acceleration. <laughs> yeah, it's just short for mass amino. <laughs> There's so many things to ask you about. Tell us about your first experience when you look back at the planet. Uh, what was that feeling? And the second time I looked, I started to get a little emotional, you know, and, and I had to catch myself, Dave, because I was afraid I might start to tear up. And if I get some water in my spacesuit, it could cause a problem. Mm -hmm. And then it'd be an investigation, and I'd have to admit that I was crying. <laughs> you know? So. And then the Russian athlete who has the record, 879 days. Yeah. He's retired now. Right. You think Dr. Whitson had a, had a chance to break that? She's got a couple more months here. She's going to get closer. If she flies again, maybe she will. Americans, we have lots of astronauts don't get to fly as much. So, uh, but, I, you know, records are meant to be broken, even in space. Yeah. I can, you still got, you still got the fire in your eyes. He's ready to go, yeah. to go back up. I'm ready, but I'm very happy for Peggy. <laughs> Thanks for covering the story. It's a great story. You you're an astronaut and you're a scientist. What can you learn from this? We're learning that the prediction of it, what Einstein predicted, that they would be circular in shape and there would be right, light around the edge, that's exactly what we see. And they talked about this shadow behind it, meaning everything gets sucked in there, all the matter, all the material, and nothing can escape, including light. I'm Mike Massimino, and this is how food is different in space. The food we have in space is prepared by are cooks, some of my favorites. I really did like the macaroni and cheese. I like the lasagna, tortellini, ravioli. I like Italian food, apparently. Am I the only one getting hungry with this? I should never do this around lunchtime. All right, go ahead. So let's talk yeah. more about the path of totality, our new favorite thing to say. Who's actually in it? Let's look closer. Yeah. And what will you see? And when you're in that path of totality, it will get, it will get dark. It'll be just like night. Really? That's happened. It'll be a hole in the sky. You'll be able to see stars. We need good weather, Al. <laughs> You're going to be able to see stars. It'll be, it'll be like a hole in the sky because the sun will be blocked, and you'll see the ring of fire, more or less, of the sun around the moon. We're not going to go anywhere else until we can live on the moon, right? You can live in an atmosphere-free, mm -hmm. radiation-filled yeah. right. environment. we got We got to be able to do that, right? Yes. Go a full-time base before we go anywhere else? I, I think so, yes. So we have a lot of experience of people in, but that's around our planet. You mentioned it very well. It's another planetary surface. It's a little bit of gravity, not zero gravity. It's a high radiation, higher than what you get in low Earth orbit. I think that's the next step. Let's take what we learned on space station, apply it to the moon, and then see where we can go after that. Where did you learn courage? Look, you weren't a jet jockey like no, I, so many I, of these I, other I guys. No, I wasn't, Brian. It was, it was a new experience for me. I think what got me through those things was having that dream of wanting to, wanting to go to space and seeing that there was a real purpose in it. And I think that that, that passion can, and, and the meaningfulness in what you're doing can take you a long way to let you take those risks.